Hi everyone, Shabbat Shalom. Here we are in Parshat Miketz at the end of the book of Genesis. We're still in the Joseph story. Joseph's on the upswing in his story. He is back in favor in Pharaoh's court. He's powerful. He's doing well. And there's a moment in this week's Parsha where the brothers all meet again for the first time in many, many years. And I want to talk about three verses and what they have to say about Joseph. We're in chapter 42, verses 6 through 8, right? Joseph's brothers came into this court and they bowed down before him. They bowed themselves down before him and Joseph made himself strange to them. And Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. Rashi says the reason that they didn't recognize him was because when he left, when they were last together, all of the brothers had beards. He didn't yet have a beard. It seems pretty practical in terms of a reason uh, for not having <clears throat> recognized each other. And Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev, one of my favorite um, Hasidic thinkers and writers from the mid to late 1700s, says something <clears throat> different about this moment. He says, this was the moment foretold by Joseph's dreams, which his brothers had resisted and fought against so bitterly. This is the moment. Had they been aware that the person to whom they were bowing was Joseph, they would have experienced a profound sense of defeat. This was why Joseph didn't immediately reveal himself. He couldn't bring himself to subject them to such humiliation, right? So if we remember way back at the beginning of the story of Joseph, he tells his brother these dreams that he has, and they're not very happy with, with what he has to say to them. Um, but they're bowing down to him just as he dreamt, just as he prophesied. Um, but Joseph doesn't reveal himself. And why? The Bredich of Rebbe says, because he knows that they would have experienced a deep sense of defeat and humiliation, and he doesn't want them to experience that. Which is fascinating, right? He doesn't want to humiliate these brothers who threw him into a pit, got him sold into slavery, uh, thrown into jail again for the rabbi say 12 years of his life, right? He doesn't want to humiliate them. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to hurt them. He tries to protect them. He asks how his family is. He doesn't kill them. It's kind of a remarkable um, show of, of Joseph's character of how he has grown as a human being um, in, in, in this moment. He, even when he sees his brother Benjamin, right, in chapter 43, verses 29 through 30, he sees his brother Benjamin and he weeps. We read, Yosef ki nichmeru rachamav elachiv v'yivakesh livkot. He hurries out because he's so overcome with rachamav elachiv, this kind of rachamim, right, this kind of mercy, this feeling, intense emotion towards his brother, and he's about to cry, uh, chadra shama, right? And he is on the verge of tears, so he runs out of the room, and he weeps, and he weeps bitterly, right? We remember this word, vayef, from the moment that Esav was weeping and weeping um, when his birthright has been stolen from him, um, and Yosef is going and, and weeping, um, and Rashi and the Midrash tell us later that when the brothers all sit together and eat, he seats each brother by mother, and he says, since Benjamin and I are both motherless, we will sit and eat together, right? So he, Yosef retains his goodness and compassion. And where does this come from? Where on earth does this come from? It would be totally reasonable to think that he would want to humiliate them. He would want to make them suffer the way that he suffered and feel humiliated in the same way that he felt humiliated. But he doesn't seem to do that. So where does this come from? I think we can say it's an innate quality, maybe, from him as, as a patriarch, as a model for us. Um, and he even says later on, sort of uh, in, in chapter 50, he says, what man intended for evil, what you intended for, for evil, for bad, God intended for good. And there's another moment where, um, where Judah says, how will we clear ourselves? God has found the iniquity of, our ser of your servants. God knows what we've done, how, how could we possibly redeem ourselves? And Rashi says, what is Judah saying? Judah is saying that we, we, haven't sin, what, we haven't sinned, but this was brought about by God. The creditor, right, God being the capital C creditor, has found from where to exact his debt. Um, and that's where the payment is coming from, from these brothers. This reminded me of 
in Pirkei Avot, chapter 4, verse 3, one of my favorites. Hu omer, al tehivaz l'chol adam. He used to say, do not despise any man. Va'al tehi maflig l'chol davar, and do not discriminate against anything. She'en l'cha adam, she'en lo sha'a. For, for there is no man that has not his hour. Ve'en l'cha davar, she'en lo makom. And there is nothing that has not its place. Which I think is a beautiful... Um, just a beautiful piece of text and, and makes me think whether or not you believe in God, um, how would life look a little bit different if we thought that there was no moment without meaning or purpose and nothing that was out of place? I think this is what gives Yosef his equanimity. I think we could call it that in this moment, right? He does, he does feel overcome with emotion, but he behaves with dignity and with respect and with compassion towards people who really hurt him very badly. Um, and what would our lives look like if we were to behave that way? Um, and, uh, and so I encourage us to try it for a week or a day or an hour um, and let me know how it goes. Shabbat Shalom.